Hello dear watercolorists and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will be painting a loose steam effect of a steam train in the forest. I chose this subject after noticing a high interest on my latest painting of a steam train on the beginners group online and if you are looking for more landscape tutorials you can head to my YouTube page, Ocean Spice, and you'll see I have there more videos on this subject. So I will be starting by walking you through my perspective drawing process. And I'm basically establishing my vanishing point. So I'm choosing a point on the paper, which is gonna be on the lower third portion of the paper. And I'm tracing lines starting from that point coming up towards me and expanding those lines basically and it, on that point i'm going to be drawing my train very very simple sketch and i'm preferring to work loose as much as possible so i pre-wetted the whole paper and i will have i'm testing the colors swatching them there and I'm spreading basically the, the under painting first, which I'm going to let dry a little bit. So for this painting, I've been using mostly schminke colors, olive green, just a touch of it, but mostly raw sienna, raw umber, chromium orange to give it a pop, and the Windsor Newton ultramarine blue green shade and uh, a pan's gray from M. Graham. I'm gonna leave all those links below where you can find all these colors that I have or you can use your colors that match as close as possible what I have here. The exact shade is not important. You can totally replace the orange and um, the raw sienna that I have with blues or purples. However you think your scene will look better. I just wanted to give it a touch of um, autumn and show this more warm tone in my painting. I'm still working wet on wet, adding darker areas and for that I'm putting more bigger concentration of color. Now the trick here, when I'm painting the train, I want everything that is around the smoke to be a little bit foggy. and the fogginess you will achieve that look by working a lot wet on wet and letting the pigment dissipate and create its own path don't um, don't try to be too tight you see my paper is constantly wet and i'm wetting it with this uh, water spray that i have from time to time i introduce some of the salt in my water so it will create this nice effect basically giving it more texture without me stopping putting salt and then letting it dry completely. I want this to be a seamless transition. You can let your paper dry more or less depending on how crisp you want your effect to be. I want the trees in the front to be more in focus and the ones that are in the background to be more out of the focus which they're going to be more blurry so more wet. I'm trying to work here with high saturation and low saturation. You see that everything that's in the background will be lower saturation. What comes in the front, it's higher saturation. At this stage, consider the fact that everything that you're going to put on your paper right now, it's going to get a lot lighter. So you see I'm putting this very intense orange on the paper, but don't worry. Once it's going to get dry, the saturation will be reduced as well. So, so basically don't be afraid at this stage. Put your colors and let them dry, see what happens. This stage of my paper is almost 
dry almost completely dry so you can see that orange that was pretty scary at first now it's more dulled down now for the train i am working very very focused on that area and i don't want any looseness in this side everything's going to be tight on the edges so i am applying a first layer of raw sienna combined with a little bit of raw umber very diluted concentration and this is gonna give me a very nice smooth rusted look underneath the, the black color which is gonna be the paint of the metal now i'm also working around the train with the adding more chromium orange in raw sienna i want to have very well defined high brightness zones and that's gonna be the area around the train and uh, you see on the top I'm, I'm creating that light pad for my smoke I don't worry about that now I will add it once the paper is completely dry and I'm gonna be working locally wet on wet For the smoke, I've been using Hayes Gray combined with some uh, ivory black. I'm using the same, I'm using this ivory black for the ground too. At this stage, you can make the, the rails very dark as well as the ground around the rails con to, to kind of carry the viewer to in your story towards that smoke and then down and then behind the trees on the left and surround them a little bit now that your paper is dry you can work dry on dry so i'm having a high concentration of color on my pig and i'm using this black velvet brush that i love so much it helps me create interesting textures without effort it's a striper quarter inch i'm gonna link it below if you're interested this is probably my, my greatest investment. So I'm holding it from the from the end of the stem and I'm kind of shaking it as much as I like I, I shake it a little bit to create these lines that are more organic and also give it more texture once my brush is dried. I, I don't I'm not in a rush to add more water, just uh, in some areas. But the least water, the more, the more texture I have. And this is the final painting. I hope you enjoyed it and leave the comments below with the next subject. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had fun. Bye-bye.